This is going to be a Throwback Thursday video all about your LinkedIn history. I'm going to walk you through how to access this in your own LinkedIn profile. And I'm also going to be sharing this video on LinkedIn. So whether you're watching this on YouTube or LinkedIn, I want you to drop your stats below. Let's go get started. So we're on LinkedIn. We're going to start at the home page. And look at this. We got a nice, cool post from Bobby Umar in here. And Bobby is killing it looking at a presentation on here. Good job, Bobby. So this is what we're going to do to get started. In your top menu bar, you're going to see Home, My Network, Jobs, Messaging, Notifications, and Me. I want you to click on Me, and then you're going to go under Account and click on Settings and Privacy. This will get a, you into the back area of your LinkedIn. And what I want you to do is look on the left-hand side of your screen now. You're going to see Settings, Account Preferences, etc. You want to go under Data Privacy. Okay, so now in data privacy, and I want you to think about we're looking for a history of your data. Okay, so that will help you to remember what we're looking for here is data privacy. Now in the middle, we're looking at how LinkedIn uses your data. The very first option you should see is manage your data and activity. And I say should see because LinkedIn sometimes move these things around. But we're going to click on if we see that manage your data and activity. Voila, look at this. Manage the data permissions you've given to LinkedIn. And this is starting with today. So these are sorted in sequential order with most recent activity first. And as you scroll through, you can see the additional actions you've taken. Here's what I want you to do. And this is the cool thing. So see at the bottom, you have number, it'll say one, two, three. So these are the pages of activity of actions you've taken through LinkedIn. At the very bottom, I want you to click on the last number. Mine says 70. Yours might say something different. But now you're going to notice these are the very first activities that you've done on LinkedIn. So starting with, for me, the join date. Okay. So I joined LinkedIn on November 18th of 2006. I want you to make a note of your start date right now. Now, the next thing I want you to do is you're going to scroll through. You might see more activity on this page or less. I'm not seeing what I'm looking for here. So I'm going to click on page 69. So I'm going a little bit more towards the present, but still in my deep LinkedIn past. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and just see what else we have inside here. So it looks like I was sharing my profile with a company in different areas on here. We're going to scroll through and just see what else is being shown inside here as well. Now, I just realized something. LinkedIn used to say in this area who you had connected to. So what I was looking for is my very first LinkedIn connection, and I'm not seeing it here. They've moved it. It's now into our data archive. So I'm going to stop this video, and then I'm going to start a new video to show you the data archive. I have to say LinkedIn makes it really fun for people like me who are trying to teach people how to use LinkedIn more effectively because they're always moving things around and they're not giving us notification of these moves. <clears throat> so this can be very confusing for you when you're not aware why things aren't where they should be, right? Like when you go to your favorite grocery store and they've moved bread into a different aisle or cheese or whatever, you can't find it. So I'm going to step back up knowing how to do a data archive, I know how to get to this data point. So what I'm looking for, who are my very first five LinkedIn connections? So I'm going to get a copy of my data. Now this is going to be inside the same area in your left navigation. If you click on data privacy, it'll bring you back up to that level again. And then in the middle, you're going to click on get a copy of your data. Now, this used to show under want something in particular, you could click on connections. They're no longer including it in this area. They're now making it a little bit more difficult. You can still get to it, but you've got to click on the download larger data archive. And you can see here including connections. So it's now included in this. And I believe they'll send this to you in two batches. So I would go ahead and request this now. And then you should be getting an email within the next 30 minutes, maybe with your first batch, and then within the next 24 to 48 hours with your second batch as well. So go ahead and click on Request Archive. And then once you have that data, watch this video again. I'm going to show you the results because I've actually done this data archive request recently. So I'm going to pop into my next page to show you the results next. So what I recommend you do is just set up a folder someplace on your laptop that you can just tuck these things into and just do a periodic data export. I recommend a full data export once a year, if not more often than that, because LinkedIn is really infamous for removing features, for deleting things, for taking sections out. Sometimes they give us advance notification and other times they don't. The other thing that is a possibility is you could lose access to your LinkedIn account. You can get kicked out of LinkedIn. And while you're going through that process of trying to reinstate access, if you haven't downloaded all of your information, you're basically losing all of your connections. And for many of us, we treat this almost the same way we used to as a, like a Rolodex, right? Or a business card holder. 
this is the only place you have your information saved about your connections unless you're using some type of a CRM system and you've exported the data there. At any rate, I would highly recommend doing a full data export once a year. Now you're going to notice when you do that full data export that the data will be saved in a zipped PDF folder. You'll have to unzip it in order to see the data. And I'm just going to go into this folder that I've created. This is the last time I did a data export, which was last month in March of 2025. And then after you do the unzipping of the file, you're going to see LinkedIn puts all of this information in various CSV individual file format. So what I'm looking for here is my list of connections and I'm going to open that up on screen now. Okay, so now I'm inside this CS CSV file, which is essentially Excel. You can always save it as Excel if you'd like. And you're going to notice here that LinkedIn gives us very limited information on our data that we export with regards to our connections, but it's good enough really here. So what you can see is you can see their first name, their last name, their LinkedIn URL, email address. You're going to notice for the most part that, let me just expand this out, that email address is usually a blank field. And that's because once upon a time, LinkedIn gave us access to everyone's emails and they realized that what people were doing is they were exporting those and then uploading those to their email newsletter list. List. And that's really a violation of canned spam requirements, which say that you have to have opt-in permission to add people to your marketing email list. And there's a little bit of a gray area here too. Essentially, if you're connecting with LinkedIn, you're connecting, you're giving them permission to connect with you and to access the email that sits on your account, but you're not giving them access to export that email and upload it into your marketing list. They're just accepting you as a connection. They're not giving you permission for the marketing email. So I think a lot of people complain to LinkedIn about this and then LinkedIn made this a field that you have to check if you want to make it available. Most people don't check it because it's by default, it's unchecked. So you're not going to notice your email address in for the variety of these. You are going to see their current company or organization and the latest position that they've held as well noted on their profile. You're also going to see the connected date. Now inside this file, I want you to scroll down to the bottom. I'm going to do that in mine right now. And this is the cool part that I really want you to see on here. This is going to show you your LinkedIn connection sorted by date that you've connected. And I want you to look at the first five people that you've connected with. And I'm just highlighting these in my list in here. Very first person was Jeff Mackey, followed by Dean Miria. Rick Coffey, Michael Bedard, and then in Ingrid Skogan. And not surprisingly, a few of these are individuals that I know personally, and some were current or former coworkers of the time. You may recall that I joined LinkedIn in November of 2006, and it was actually November 18th. So I think it was probably Jeff Mackey's invitation that prompted me to finally start the LinkedIn account. That combined with my friend Erica Crocker, which ironically, she had talked about it, but she and I actually didn't connect until the next spring, actually summer in June of 2027. So here's what I want you to do. Go into comments and tell me and actually tag in the first five people that you connected with. These are only going to show people who will currently have a LinkedIn account, meaning they haven't closed their account or deleted it or removed you as a connection. So these are going to show you people that you're still connected with in order of who was your very first connection. And then I also want you to tag in, do you remember who was it the person that prompted you to create a LinkedIn and to really get active? For me, it was Erica Crocker. So we're gonna do a little bit of shout out here in our Throwback Thursday. And I hope this information is helpful for you. I really wanted to focus on just showing you some of your initial data points when you began your LinkedIn presence and also tagging in those first few connections that you had. But in the process of creating this video, I discovered that LinkedIn had removed the connections from that manage your data activity section of your profile. But it also reminded me to remind you to do a data export so you can have access to some of this information. I'm not afraid to admit that I'm a bit of a data geek when it comes to LinkedIn, but I also like to go really deep in understanding your LinkedIn profile and the implications of platform changes as they occur, but also giving those shout outs to people in your network who've been a part of your LinkedIn journey. And in closing, I wanna remind you that I am a LinkedIn coach and trainer. I do work with individuals one-on-one. -on -one. I have some online programs and I also work with teams to educate and train your team on social selling and best practices. If you ever have any LinkedIn questions, do let me know. It might prompt me to create another video like today. And I do hope that you enjoyed it. If so, do let me know in comments below. Thank you so much for watching. This is Brenda Meller here to help you get a bigger slice of the LinkedIn pie. Have a great day.